Falcon and the Winter Soldier, directed by Carrie Scoglin, is the Disney Plus original series that premiered already about one month ago, which, like WandaVision, takes place mainly after the events of Endgame, in a post-world snap, or blip, I guess is the way to say it, where we now get to see the world after the consequences of Endgame and the state of the planet, especially from the perspective of Falcon and Bucky. With the show having its season finale last week, I finally got to check it out with my friends and I, so without further ado, here is what I thought of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it's unbelievable to think that we now live in an era where you can have two big budget comic book shows back to back, especially in the era of a pandemic. To think that less than two decades ago, the biggest films, comic book films altogether, were really the standalone superhero films like the Batman and Spider-Man films. You couldn't really expect anything else in that. It just wasn't heard of that less than two decades later superheroes will not just become the face of blockbusters but now the face of primetime television with what a surprise the mcu now leading the way once again with its two biggest newest shows with wandavision and now falcon and the winter soldier and while wandavision was more focused on pioneering new ways to tell stories by mixing in the sitcom genre with the mcu formula Falcon and the Winter Soldier goes for the more classic action-packed MCU formula with some of the most ridiculous action sequences you can think of, some of the crazy special effects, some of the craziest stunt sequences, and some of the most lovable characters you could possibly think of. Or at least I thought that it was going to be. The show isn't just a giant action extravaganza where Sam and Bucky just kick the living shit out of everyone. As a matter of fact, the main focus of the show truly are the after events of Endgame and the state of the world that everyone's been left in and how desperate times have become for everyone. To even show how the main characters like Sam and Bucky are still struggling after they literally defeated one of the biggest threats to known to humanity and but literally Sam can't get a bank loan. A fucking bank loan. And that really is the main focus throughout all the six episodes. Characters struggling to get by in this new world, or some just completely losing all faith in their leaders and in their world altogether, and just becoming desperate and bringing matters into their own hands, which is where the main villains, the Flag Smashers, the terrorist organization, came from. They're so desperate of the old world pre-Endgame, and how things seem just so much easier for them that they are desperate to go back to that world. They don't want to destroy the world, they just want the world to go back the way it was. Which is just such a strange, thought-provoking, and unique kind of villain that we're not really used to in the MCU. Characters that have just become so desperate for a better time that they're willing to destroy and murder people just to get that for them. And they're children! It's freaking children! That actually blew my mind. I thought I was a kid. Holy shit, they really went there. It even brings you chills when you start learning more of the production history and the background and the behind the scenes behind the show. When you start to learn about the actual other plot points that they were going to bring up into the show. Like the main fact that there were actually going to be, uh, be a whole plot point of the fact that there was a global pandemic happening in the show. In the middle of our pandemic, the show was going to target a global pandemic and how people get desperate in a pandemic. I don't know why the hell they cut that. I, I guess they just didn't want to encourage more anti-maskers. It was and one of the other main themes that the show targets a lot that I absolutely love that they kept in was the whole thing of Sam being a black man and from his culture gonna be the new Captain America, the new leader to represent a country that for many years of its history didn't even consider Sam as a human being. And a lot of the new characters of the show remind him of that and even teach him more of this dark history that even Captain America, Steve Rogers himself, went through without even knowing it. About a lot of soldiers before were tested with that super soldier serum, but because of their skin color and their origin, were just completely written off of history and all their victories, all their sacrifices, all their suffering almost meant nothing. And how a lot of these characters are almost insulted that Sam even wants to consider being Captain America. Which brings more pressure in the idea that if he really wants to be the new Captain America at all. Just perfectly just represents what's happening in our time. Which makes me still wish that they honestly kept that whole plot point in the pandemic. It just would have been the most relevant show of all time if they did that. Falcon and the Winter Soldier really manages to balance out the epic action sequences with the serious political drama in its characters just near to perfection throughout every episode. After a big heavy action sequence, or even before when you get to see Bucky deal with still with his depression and his guilt, Sam still deal with the pressure of becoming the next Captain America, the Flag Smashers, and learning from their perspective and what's leading them to such desperate measures. Or even before I forget, the US agent, or I guess the new Captain America, while slowly but surely losing his mind throughout the process. It's all just still so expertly set up that despite even those dark moments that it goes for, like when straight up the US agent just decapitates someone with his own shield, still manages to make you laugh, still manages 
to get you excited and even gets you very optimistic by the final episode while still being very serious in the finale being possibly one of my favorite episodes of the whole season when falcon after that epic fucking action sequence where you finally see his brand new suit he goes into this very serious political message that can just not be more relevant and more to home that is happening especially here in the states today and what's happening in our pandemic that just really gets you it just wow i i can't believe that an action show about a man with literal metal wings and a dude with a metal arm could get that serious and that thought-provoking and that's really what I loved about the show that honestly leaves you wanting more by the final episode. And However, Winter Soldier isn't a perfect show either. And once again, it ironically seems to suffer the exact same issue that WandaVision did, which makes me wonder, I wonder if all the producers just kind of went for the same kind of idea of just absolutely rushing everything by the final episode. And though, yes, I just said that the final episode was my possibly favorite one of the entire season, I just feel like they just handled everything by assuming that let's just set everything up for a season two. Let's just assume that people are going to love this so much that we're going to have a season two of this. And most things aren't really solved. Conflicts aren't really handled. Things aren't really, um, what do you call it, complete. A lot of arcs are still going on and a lot of new mysteries were added in, which could still get you excited for a season two, but... The more that I was actually reading about the show and I realized that it's supposed to just be a miniseries, it kind of leaves you almost a little disappointed, assuming that they're not going to have a second season of this show, that it's just going to end like that with like all the cliffhangers that they had, with uh, so many characters and the way they go and all the new characters they brought in. I, I just really hope that unlike WandaVision, they actually do continue this one because it's just so strange that Marvel clearly has this insane potential with their TV shows and how damn good they handle them, but they seem to almost just freak out by the final episode and just go, no, 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 that's enough, that's enough, just leave it there. With WandaVision and Winter Soldier now coming out back to back, yes, admittedly, they're not perfect. There are some problems that both shows have, especially a lot of it was still just focusing a lot on just the MCU formula, not going all the way. It just shows how much true potential that the that Marvel has in the TV side of things and how incredible their shows can be. So I, I just really hope we get to see, at worst, just more of these characters on the small screen. And definitely, I want to see more of a season two of Winter Soldier, of Sam and Bucky just going around and just solving crimes and mysteries happening around the world. It's just been an absolute blast. There's so much potential with it. I really hope Disney goes for it. In conclusion, it's absolutely jaw-dropping action sequences. It's unique and fun characters and the unique themes explored throughout the whole season. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is another Marvel masterpiece brought to us on the small screen, leaving you just wanting more. That honestly disproves once again Marvel's dominance in the industry without even having to release a single film for Phase 4. I'm going to give Falcon and the Winter Soldier a 9 out of 10, an absolutely amazing show with absolutely incredible action sequences, incredible characters, and thought-provoking themes that it explored just in 6 episodes. Guys, that was my review for Falcon and Winter Soldier. What did you guys think of the first season? Do you think they're going to be bringing more? What were your thoughts on the US agent? Do you really think that he's going to be losing his mind in the end? They kind of redeemed him by that final episode, honestly. But either way, guys, thank you all so much always for watching. There are new videos coming soon and some even a lot of exciting new projects that will be coming soon to this channel that I cannot wait to talk to you guys about. It's just all not really confirmed yet, so I'm going to keep it on the down low. Either way, expect some new reviews coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a lovely day. See you guys.